Hi, this is Tony, and we're back on the bench. And this evening, we're going to be doing another spinning reel, a walkthrough service here. So we've got a Abu Garcia Cardinal 453 GL. Uh, it's kind of a lightweight uh, graphite style, a rear drag system reel. Um, and this uh, this reel, I recently did service, and we're just going to go through all the take apart steps, the you know the cleaning tips and whatnot, lube points and uh, put it back together. So if you have this reel or if you're thinking of picking up this reel somewhere, uh, you know, in, in the, you know, in market someplace, then uh, you'll know how to work on it, service it, and uh, care for it. Uh, so this reel actually has a little bit of a backstory uh, for myself. Uh, this is actually a reel I bought for my father many years ago. Uh, you know, growing up as a kid, you know, we didn't have a lot of fishing gear. And, uh, I saw this reel being sold uh, also with a Abu, uh, I think it was a 5500C. Uh, so it, it was a combo uh, kit basically with a bait casting style reel and a spinning reel. And uh, it came from Kmart. I think it was like 50 bucks or something like that. This is back in the 80s, of course. Uh, you know, but it was it was a pretty good deal, you know, to get two, two completely different, you know, reels, you know, in, in one you know, package basically. So, uh, but at the time I felt pretty proud about uh, picking that out for my dad. And, uh, and, and this was essentially just another reel that, that he could use, uh, you know, for, for trout fishing primarily. And so, uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna see what it looks like here. And, uh, this is not a ball bearing reel. It's, uh, it's not quite that sophisticated, you know, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you don't have to have ball bearings to catch fish necessarily, right? So we've got four screws here on our side plate. Take those out. But yeah, this reel did need some cleaning. It was sitting on a shelf for a great number of years and uh, just kind of idling more or less okay so you've got a side plate there okay and then you've got a bushing here just put that back in there okay but also make note that there is a thin washer here on the inside and you don't want to lose that okay you want to clean up this housing of course really well as in all my videos it's all about cleaning uh, just as much as it is lubricating and everything else. All right, so we got our main gear there. I'm not going to be doing a bunch of re-lubing in this. I'll show you what I have done, being that I've already serviced the reel, of course, so that you know. But, you know, this is what it should look like on the inside. Very clean parts. Okay. And we've got a, a little set screw here that needs to come out in order to take out our main shaft. Okay, I like to keep these parts trays nearby, of course, when we're doing this kind of work, on any fishing reel for that matter. So we've got this clip here, retainer clip that needs to come out, okay? And then at this point, our main shaft will come on out, all right? And then we've got our, our block. And then we've got our crosswind gear down here. Should be able to take that out with a pair of needle nose real gently like so. So all these pieces and parts need to get cleaned up. Uh, and you can take uh, any kind of penetrating uh, lubricant uh, that you have around the house or anything WD-40. This happens to be liquid wrench penetrating oil. I'm kind of using up this can or what's left of it. Uh, before I go buying something else. Uh, uh, but there's lots and lots of great products out there. Seafoam Deep Creep is another one, a little expensive, but it's a great product. Uh, but any uh, penetrating lubricant that you have to clean up all these pieces and parts is definitely in order. Okay, now we've got a, a, a nut up here that needs to come off. And I forget what size it is. I believe it's a metric size. Yeah, so that's an 11 millimeter, okay? And you can do that with an 11 millimeter uh, nut driver or socket. I'm just going to do it with this wrench here. There is no set screw 
uh, to hold this in position and keep it from unwinding. I would say that this reel is probably, I mean, it is the Cardinal series, but I would call it probably a little bit more on the budget line as far as Abu products are concerned. Uh, not that it's a bad product or anything to that effect, but it's just one little thing to to note, uh, you know, the way that, uh, you know, s some of these, uh, these pieces are and the way that they've gone together and whatnot. Okay. So we've got our, our rotor and bale assembly off. Okay. So now we've got two set screws in these positions here that need to come out. Okay. Once again, this is just a, a quick walkthrough, but we're going to talk about everything as we go here, of course. We've got those two little set screws here. We're going to put those over there. Okay, so you've got that piece that comes off. You want to clean off any dirt or debris that's hiding underneath there. Okay, and now you should, in fact, be able to pull out your pinion gear assembly. And this is a pretty basic assembly here. Uh, you've got a, a thin washer that rests here on top, and then you've got this bushing here, right? So you've got those pieces set up there. I'm just going to put those off to the side here. I'm going to keep them in order. All right, so at this point, let's just talk quickly about the cleaning, okay? So you take your penetrating oil or a lubricant, whatever it is that you got, all right, and you spray all these pieces down, okay, with that. And then you take uh, just a, a basic household toothbrush such as this, clean up all these pieces really well, get all these gear teeth cleaned up really well, all right, on all pieces and parts, okay? Uh, if there's any signs of rust or corrosion, you really want to try to eliminate that, especially like on your drive shaft. You know, these are pretty clean pieces. Uh, you know, my, my dad was pretty good, you know, with his equipment for the most part, so... Uh, you know, they, they definitely were not abused, you know, but a lot of the time, you know, you'll see like evidence of rust and things like that, like on the drive shaft, you want to take some 4 steel wool to that. Okay. And scrub the surface of that. And, you know, the 4 part is really important because it's kind of non-abrasive or a light abrasive, but it won't scar the metal. Okay. Get all your pieces and parts cleaned up, okay? Inspect your bale and your rotor assembly. Get any sand or grit or dirt, things of that sort out of here, okay? Now we're left uh, with the drag uh, set up here. Uh, also note that there is a, another bushing, a brass bushing down in here, okay? Uh, you know, that can stay in there, but you want to make sure that everything in here is cleaned as well. And uh, one thing that I resort to in here, sometimes I'll take penetrating fluid depending on how gummed up it is, but a lot of the time I'll just take some purple power, uh, you know, all-purpose uh, cleaner of some kind or some simple green is really well, you know, a great product uh, for this kind of application. Squirt that in there, scrub it with those toothbrushes. Q-tips are also really handy. I go through lots and lots of Q-tips whenever I'm working on a fishing reel. Okay, it's a great, great, thing to have on hand okay but get this housing cleared out okay you want all the dirt and contaminants out of there now for the rear drag stack okay so typical of a lot of drag stacks on these kinds of spinning reels okay you've got your cap here and it's got numbers written on it indicating how much drag you have Okay, now this uh, setup here is kind of an interesting one because it's got this uh, retainer clip. There goes that bushing there. We're going to put that off to the side because it'll probably fall out again. Uh, but you've got this, this clip in here. Okay, and this, uh, th this clip can be a little tricky, and what I found is probably the most effective thing to do uh, this is a plastic housing, okay, and you don't want to crack it or break it, so you want to just kind of gently pull this out with the help of a screwdriver, okay, and then you want to tighten up the drag so that the clearance goes down and it allows some play for the rest of this spring, okay, basically, okay. And then you should, in fact, be able to pull 
the other end of this spring up on both ends here. Okay, and then once you have this pulled out enough, you should be able to just kind of pry this up and you see how it kind of snapped out. Okay, and then it should come out fairly easily. Okay, and then at that point, you can undo your drag stack and unwind it gently. Okay, and just make a mental note that there's lots and lots of little pieces hiding in here and you don't want to lose them. Okay, so we've got a few different things here to note. We've got a, a washer hiding under here. Okay, you want to clean out the inside of that housing. And then we've got a spring, of course. All right, and then we've got a few different pieces and parts hiding in here. And what I like to do here is I'll take a pair of needle nose and just gently pull this assembly out so that you can see what it looks like. <coughs> and then I like to just take all these washers apart one by one, and then they get a cleaning and inspection. Sometimes washers need to be replaced. Uh, replacing washers for a reel such as this could be a little difficult, but there's parts reels. I'm not 100% sure about going to Abu Garcia directly for parts, uh, you know, for older reels, though. I don't know. I don't know how effective that is because I typically don't do that uh, for at least any of my own fishing reels uh, that are, you know, vintage like this. I usually end up try not to put too much money into older products, really. Okay, so this is your drag stack. Okay, so you get all these lined up. You clean off all these metal washers here. Okay, and then you've got your just your regular uh, standard drag washers here. Right, and you want to just clean everything up the best that you can. Okay, and then you're basically ready for reassembly. Okay, so we've got this. The spacer washer here that goes on the bottom first, and then we've got the the toothed washer here. Okay, and there's a number of different ways that you could go about putting this back in. And also make note you want to clean out the inside of this housing. Uh, a lot of the time, sand, grit, and dirt has a tendency to build up down in there and grease and things of that sort. You want to get all that cleaned up, get that Q-tip, take that purple power degreaser, clean out that housing really, really well. Okay. But a lot of the time, what I'll try to do is I'll just try to reassemble this stack and then just gently put it all back into position uh, before I attempt to individually put each washer back in one by one with this shaft in there already. All right, so we've got a keyed washer, drag washer, just a regular metal washer, drag washer, keyed washer. Okay, so this is where we stop and we get our needle nose back. Okay and just gently line up the keys on those washers with the two slots that are in the housing here. Sometimes they get a little loose on you like that one just did, that's okay. Just use your little tools to get everything lined up and it'll be fine. some reason it keeps on coming out on us there okay so you can see the teeth are sticking out right there okay so that means that it's in position spring goes back in all right and then you've got your 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 threaded portion of this assembly here and just remember, you're, you're screwing a metal thread on a plastic thread, okay? So it's really important that all those threads get cleaned up really well, okay? And then you just want to gently tighten this up as much as you can by hand, okay? And then you've got your, your set spring, okay? And you should be able to put it back uh, the way that you had it uh, come out, 
Okay, back to that. Just kind of squeeze these in. Okay. Should snap in that little slot right there. Okay. And we're just going to back this off here a little bit. Okay. So what you want to shoot for is you want to have the zero uh, pretty much be zero drag essentially. Okay. So what I like to do here usually on most designs is I'll, I'll turn this until I can feel it start to touch the washers and apply just a little bit of pressure right there. Okay. But not, you know, you don't want to start turning and turning and turning, right? You just want to feel it touch the washers. Okay. And then once you're there, in theory, that is a zero drag, essentially. Okay. And then we just want to pull this back over on top. And this spring uh, clip here sticking out is the part that hits these plastic tabs on here. And you hear those, those, the, the sound of that when you turn this, essentially. Okay. Okay, so you're at set at zero right there, and we're going to put our set screw back on, like so. And then we're just going to put all these pieces and parts back together in the reverse order, essentially. Okay, so we've got brass bushing right there. Okay, we've cleaned up all of our parts. They're ready for reassembly. Also make note here, uh, I forgot there is a very thin spacer washer, brass washer right there. You want to make sure that's intact. Clean up all this really well. And then pack those gears with some pen precision blue grease. It's good stuff. That's what I like to use on pretty much all my fishing reels that I work on. All right, and then all these pieces, we've cleaned them up and just put them back piece by piece. Okay. Once again, there's no uh, ball bearings to deal with in this reel, so we don't need to worry about that. I like to take a little bit of uh, reel X uh, to these holes right here with these little set screws. I've already done it, so I'm not going to bother using up more oil on that, but that's a, a product that I like to use as far as oil is concerned. And uh, I'll say what I always say in all my videos, uh, when you're working on fishing reels, make sure you're using products that are made for fishing reels. Don't use uh, automotive products, don't use, um, you know, Vaseline and stuff like that. Um, you know, there are a lot of old school methods that in their time were the only methods available basically, but, you know, technology has, has come a long way since then with some of those products and you know to be honest a, a lot of these things that i use they're really not that expensive uh, you can get pen precision grease like on amazon big uh, jar of it like that i think it's like under 10 bucks uh, this uh, bottle of real x uh, i think i got that at mysticparts.com that's a great source uh, for those products as well i also do use pen precision oil is uh, is also a really good a real oil, but just make sure that whatever you're using, it's meant for fishing reels. Okay. All right. So we've got uh, some pieces and parts here. We've, we've cleaned all this up really well, but yeah, when you, when you put these pieces back in, uh, you know, you just, you take uh, a, a little, uh, like artist brush like this and dip it in, you know, this jar here, like so. Okay, and then that's all you got to do is just hit those gears, you know, lightly, you know, as you're putting them back in. Okay, pretty basic, pretty simple. Okay, so we've got our cross wind block here. All right, so we're just kind of lining up all these pieces and parts here, you know, kind of getting a sense of what everything looks like. But before we do go any further, this actually needs to go back on first, okay? So what we want to do here, I like to hit a little bit of penetrating oil in this assembly right here and make sure that the bale springs are also lubricated accordingly. I'll usually take some Real X to these seams 
right here. Okay, it's pretty pretty simple. Check your line roller as well. I do have a separate video on that. You can check that out on the YouTube, but you basically take that screw out and you take apart uh, the components that are in here. It usually consists of maybe a bushing, uh, like a plastic bushing or something like that. Uh, the fancier models will have ball bearings in here. That's not the case for this reel, of course. Uh, but you want to check that, make sure that that's uh, in good shape there. Okay, and then you do have these two spacers right here. Just make note, okay? But we're going to put this back on top here, like so. There's that 11 millimeter nut that needs to go back on. And these are brass nuts, by the way, so uh, just use caution when you're uh, taking them off and putting them back on because they will scar. It's soft metal. Just give that a little, little snug, like so. Don't over tighten it, there's no need for it, okay? Okay. So now we've cleaned up our, our drive shaft, okay, with that 4 steel wool, and then we'll just take that pin precision blue grease and just do a light film of that on here. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, basically, so that you can see what that looks like. Slide that back down into position, and it needs to sink all the way down into those washers, okay, all the way down, okay. All right, now, remember that retaining clip that we're talking about. There's two little slots down there that that has to line up on, okay? Put that clip back into position. Little drop of real X oil there. You got your set screw here. We're going to tighten that up. Okay, now for the main gear. So Abu has done us a favor, and there's this plastic tab here that you can line up with that inspection hole right there, okay? And where that tab needs to go is right in the slot here of the anti-reverse uh, dog right here, basically, okay? So uh, thanks to them, they've given us that inspection hole so that we can actually see what we're doing there. But before we do that, make sure all these gears are clean, okay, as usual, and then take that blue grease and apply it to the shaft and all the teeth. You don't need to overdo it. The grease will work its way into all the teeth. You don't have to hit every single tooth, okay, but you do want to get uh, the, the, you know, a fair amount of grease on there, but you don't want to overdo it by any means, okay. Okay, so it should look something like that. Okay, and then we'll take that blue grease to the outside of that shaft there. Just a light little little film. Got that thin washer, and then we got our cap side plate that goes back on. And then we got four screws that go back in, like so. And I hit these with a little bit of that real X oil as well, just to protect the threads and integrity of the reel. But yeah, I wanted to work on this reel uh, right away because uh, it's trout season right now in the local lakes and stuff they've been stocking and uh, and I'm ready to, to get on out and, and, and have this reel do some fishing again. So probably get it spooled up with some eight pound test. I think it's rated up to eight pound test. Maybe some six pound test might be appropriate. Don't over tighten these. They need to be snug, but you don't need to over tighten them. All right. Remember that you're dealing with, you know, plastic pieces and graphite pieces and they will crack. Okay. And you don't want to do that.
Okay. All right, so we'll put our, you know, inspect under here, and make sure that it's free from dirt and debris and stuff, all right? And then clean off, you know, these areas here. I put a little bit of Reolex right there at the, at the handle joint and on the threads. All right, and then we've got this cap here. This is a reversible, a uh, convertible handle style reel. So I'm just going to snug that up a little bit. So, there you have that. Anti-reverse is good. This does not click uh, when you turn the spool. It's just the way that it is. A lot of spinning reels, you, you usually hear them click. That's not the case for this reel at all. So we're just tightening up that drag, making sure that that's working okay. And then make sure you loosen it up when you're not using the reel. Okay. So there you have it. That is the Abu Garcia 453GL Cardinal uh, spinning reel, all serviced up and ready to go. So thanks again for watching. This is Tony with Back on the Bench. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please do subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification button. That way you will be getting updates as to all the new videos that I'm putting out. And there will be many more coming out in the days and weeks and months to follow. We'll see you next time.